Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Nathan Silas and today we have a very interesting video to react to and then this was done by Sheikh Ahmed Didat. And then when it comes to divorce, of course, what is the account or positions of Muslim when it comes to divorce? What needs to happen before a man can divorce a woman? I believe that this is going to be a very interesting one, listening to the Islamic perspective of um divorce so if today happens to be the first time of you taking out my channel don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my facebook and instagram and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys before we get on to the video i'm a theologian and i make this video not to discredit anyone's religion this is basically for educational purposes and i believe that at the end of this video we all are going to learn from this so guys without any further ado let's get down to this video and check this out you what village are you from that Keshwa. yeah right that targeshwa targeshwa mm. is, is it that Keshwa? is the hindu way mm. so like you get married now mm. but you married in exchange you know the other guy's sister married you and your sister married that one and now your wife was giving you trouble you can come out. So you said, talak, talak, talak. Mm -hmm. Right. Finish. You throw her out. So she goes crying to your mother's house. Mm -hmm. You know. She said, the guy divorced me. Mm -hmm. Your brother-in-law? It's the past. He divorced my Why, a sister? Right. That guy's sister. Mm -hmm. Was my nephew himself. Talak, 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 talak. But there were two sisters. <laughs> ah, this yeah. guy's two sisters there. Mm -hmm. Your two. So the other brother comes and says, Master, even this is my sister. <laughs> Three divorces in one day, mm -hmm. in one family. Mm -hmm. So I says, now, did the Mulvi speak about this subject? No, he's not speaking about this at all. Why? Why? So I tell you, I said the right time to talk this. What I'm talking about mm -hmm. is on the occasion of marriage. Mm -hmm. No, no, marriage taking place, a, a, a little talk before this thing. This subject should be spoken there, then. I said, you see, in Islam, Islam allows you talaq. Mm -hmm. But now, these are the conditions of talaq. This is what Allah laid down for you. In everything else, Islamic, how to pray? The Quran says, look at the Prophet. Mm -hmm. The way he did it, you do. Fasting, how? Huh? So look at the Prophet. Hajj. Look at the Prophet. Divorce. He doesn't say look. That's the only subject in the Quran which is dealt with comprehensively. Because Allah wouldn't allow his Prophet to divorce his wife to set us an example. Our mother. Because the wife of the Prophet is our mother. So he must divorce our mother to give us an example how to divorce. No, no, no. So he goes and spells it out for you. That's the only topic in the Quran which is dealt with comprehensively the whole surah is whole surah is talaq and, but nobody knows it nobody knows it so now the right time is when you're getting married i must tell you i said look you see don't well you know. speak at weddings don't you no then again it's uncalled for you see at the wedding night as soon as i speak about talaq everybody the, the, say look the, at this the, 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 the bride's father and the family they think i'm suggesting something to you Mm. That you see, my son, you know, you got a chance of, you know, mm. I'm doing that to you. So it's not in good taste. Mm. But that's the right time mm. to warn you. Mm. Don't do silly, silly, bloody things, you know. But you see, if you want to, then. But in other words, I'm giving you ideas. So that guy doesn't like it. So I just say nice, nice things about you, and you say nice, nice things. But that is the right time. Which we should tell. Talk to the people. Let them know. Because the, when else can you. At a funeral, you're going to talk about this? Mm. No. <laughs> when, when, when you going to talk? At Maulud, you're going to talk about this? No. When you're going to talk about this? So the subject is never discussed. But the right time is marriage. I must now tell, show all the pros and cons. All this, my son, is to be on guard. Mm -hmm. But now that somebody is feeling hypersensitive, I'm giving you suggestions. <laughs> my, my daughter is getting married, and that bastard is telling you that you know you can divorce her and all that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that guy also <laughs> he keeps his mouth shut. But individually, the Muslim is supposed to know. And he doesn't know. Our, our drawback, the Muslim is, he doesn't know his book. The Christian, whatever, he knows his book. Whether right or wrong, but he knows his book. We, we don't know our book. 
We are only living by what we heard. You saw this article I did at mm. Islamic Correspondence College. I'll, I'll, I'll go to it. Well, that, that's, that's one of the avenues you should use. You know, to teach, uh, to teach the Islam yes, and its doctrine. Yes, we need course, open the door to knowledge, Islamic Correspondence College. You know this, huh? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Muhammad, yeah. Mm. No, I'm going to start a course, I think, every Saturday morning. Mm. Every Saturday morning in Ramadan, I have a two-hour course. Mm. An intensive course in comparative religion, free of charge, <coughs> two hours. Uh, At your cinema? No, no, no. Yeah. no I have only 30 students. Mm -hmm. I just did the course in Cape Town. I call it a combat kit. Oh, yeah, right. The, like the book. So the now, video. I says, now, I want you to do the exercise. Just like me talking to you, all what I spoke to you just now. Mm. I just said, well, this is very interesting. You know, this thing, suppose I was interviewing the guy on, on, on TV. You know, this could be a lovely program. You know, all this, mm, and enlightening the guy and entertaining. It's, it's, my talks are also entertaining as well as enlightening. Mm -hmm. I'm educating you, at the same time, I'm entertaining you. Mm -hmm. And everybody relishes it. Whatever I talk, even nonsense. If I talk, you seem to say that. Uncle, <laughs> you you carry on. Sit down, sit down, sit down. <laughs> You're getting entertained, you see. <laughs> so, I did a, a course in, in Gatesville in uh, Cape Town. I mm -hmm. went to every day. Last, last, right. week, last week I was there. And I said, right, that gave me an idea. Mm -hmm. Two hour course. Every Saturday morning, you mm -hmm. can also come and take for two hours. Right. Is it just two hours? Well, I keep and, all my fasts, sir. So, huh? I, I fast every Ramzan. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Because you see, nobody wakes up when my mother for Ramzan. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Siri in the morning. So, so I fast with her. Lovely. Every year. Lovely, lovely. You see, but now we say, the fasting you have done, you have gone through the mill, mm -hmm. but intention is the thing that is acceptable in the sight of God. Your intention. You have gone through the the process. We paid the price, mm -hmm. but you didn't have the intention of paying for the ticket. You just like you threw that money away. Mm -hmm. You can't get entry into heaven. You must say, right, I do it for this. It's right, okay, it's accepted. You know, so in lieu of this. I mean, that means your intention is to fast. Because God wants me to fast. Why does he want you to fast? The Quran says, the so fasting is prescribed for you as well as those before you mm -hmm. that ye may learn self-restraint. That's the purpose of fasting. Yeah, that's what I do it for. That for you for learn discipline. Discipline. Mm -hmm. So he says, now you're thirsty, man. You're thirsty. Mm -hmm. huh? And there's cool, refreshing water in the, in the fridge. Or Coke. He says, yeah. I won't touch it. And the throat is gone dry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have vowed. Mm -hmm. You can with your wife in the direction. She's happy. You are happy. He says, no. I shan't do it because I'm fasting. Mm -hmm. Now what's doing now? You can control yourself. Mm -hmm against what is lawful for your own wife. She's happy to entertain you. But he said, no, I shall do it. You are thirsty. The water is there. Mm. The cook is there. But he said, no, I shan't touch it. So it makes it easy for you to, to restrain yourself from forbidden things. That's the discipline. Mm. The Muslim and you, we are marching. We lost our way. And we are thirsty. Both of us are thirsty. And you see a pool of water. You will go jump in for it. Mm. The Muslim, as I don't know, you know <laughs> he, yeah. he can still hold on because he's used to say, no. You see, I must verify whether the water is, <laughs> is pure and this and that before I drink it. You will you know, shh, jump into it, it could be poison. Right. Yeah. So he says, now, that discipline, discipline, that is the purpose of fasting, nothing else. So he says, now, I do it for that reason. Blessing. You just do it it's because my mother doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> so you get the benefit, all right, yeah. but uh, not the reward. Right. Well, that's a very interesting um, video, listening to Sheikh Ahmed did that, of course, um, giving his positions when he comes to um, divorce, you understand, in um, Islam. And then he used Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, you understand, as an example, you understand, about um, divorce. And then he feels like God feel that is not, you understand, a right thing for his prophet, you understand, to set a precedence when it comes to um, divorce. And that's why, you understand, that is 
very um, discouraging in a sense when it comes to the Islam. But then when you look at it in a sense, power, we Christians, of course, it's not basically for only in a sense the prophet or the pastors or the bishops and the rest of it. But then it is something that is just generally in a sense for all Christians. Jesus in a sense advised us that, of course, except on the situation of um, adultery, then you should rather, in a sense, give her, in a sense, a divorce, in a sense, later. But before you do so, you have to make it up, in a sense, in your mind that you are not going to, what, to remarry again. I'm making reference to Matthew. So when you look at, in a sense, all those things, in a sense, of course, that's why you see, as a Christian, it is highly, in a sense, discourageable for you to, what, to divorce. Or it's been expected that before you think about, in a sense, settling down with someone, you should try your base in a sense and know the person very well when it comes to the time of um, courtship because people tend to divorce nowadays not basically in a sense based on um, adultery but then some of them maybe because they didn't know their partner in a sense very well and then you see people or you see christians in a sense filing for divorce which is absolutely in a sense a wrong thing because when you look at it in a sense by how christ in a sense advised us you are not supposed in a sense to divorce in a sense after you marry it's only one condition which is based on adultery so it means that if you understand you marry someone and it's not based on adultery it means that you can't be able to to divorce the person but instead you should be able to at least try to stay with the person in a sense irrespective of the situation but then things in a sense happening in a sense in this very um dispensation maybe probably people um got married and they did not take time to know each other right and then when they marry and then maybe probably they get to start finding out in a certain things and then they just feels like oh no look that's not the kind of person that i am going to get married which means that people are actually in a sense falling in love or getting married for different um, reasons and then those reasons sometimes in a sense are wrong because sometimes people got to marry because of maybe money maybe because of finance right and then what now happen if the man or the woman the money is no longer there or maybe probably the businesses they are doing in a sense falls and then all those things and then things begin to fall apart are you going to stay or are you going to divorce you see that's why i see people who go to marriage in a sense for this kind of wrong reasons in a sense and end up in a sense filing for divorce and then some people of course get married because of they want to have um, children and then maybe probably if they got to realize that maybe probably the man or the woman in a sense have some kind of um, deficiency in some certain aspect that may prevent them from getting um, pregnant or conceiving then therefore you see the people in a sense actually filing for divorce and then some they may not need to actually in a sense look at maybe probably the background that the man is coming from or the woman is coming from and then the issue of genotype you understand blood group that some may not be compatible or you may be ended up giving birth to children and then you know those things in a sense are some of the things that people are supposed to what be asking questions when it comes to the times of um, courtship but then others in a sense fails to do so and then Therefore, after marriage, they got to realize that this is the case, and then some people will decide that what we want to file for divorce because some people feel like some people used to lie in a sense about this type of um, thing until marriage when they find out, and then people begin to seek for divorce. So when you look at it in a sense, there are a couple of different reasons in a sense to why people in a sense file for divorce, and some people they don't just want to be faithful either a man or a woman they don't want to be faithful to one person and then therefore filing for divorce so this video is making us to understand that of course you are not supposed to file in a sense for a divorce except for these reasons that is based on christian's um faith but then to the islam it was maybe basically for the prophet in a sense that not to do that so that he should not in a sense set in a sense precedent so if you look at it in a sense by the islamic belief i will say that it is not good for anyone in a sense to go to 
divorce as a matter of fact there's actually no condition to it that's how i understand um ahmed did that even though ahmed did that went on to explain in a stand fasting and then ramadan and then he was trying to state the importance of fasting which is actually in a sense a good thing because it's actually a time that you decide to what to abstain in a sense from food and then therefore what you fast right when you fast you're trying to, to communicate with god of course you may have need or you may different reasons in a sense why people fast anyway but then of course it's for you to communicate in a stand with your maker to thank him to praise him and then abstain from food dedicated only to him a very interesting one and i hope that some of us in a sense has learned from some of this um, narration by sheikh um, ahmed um, did that in this very um show so guys i know that a lot of you have told an opinion in a sense concerning this video and i wanted to drop it at the comment section and may god bless you as you do so so this is the end of my video if you like my reaction you should like share and subscribe if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys you remain blessed and i see you in my next video bye bye